Let's just start with a number. Actually, scratch that. Let's start with a string of numbers. These numbers have meaning, but what that meaning is isn't too important right now. They're just numbers. Now let's say you wanted to get this number to a friend, but let's also say that there may be bad guys listening. So we need a way of sharing them in secret. We could substitute numerals for other numerals so that only those people that know the mapping can understand the meaning of the coded message. Now, all we have to do is pre-share that mapping with our friend and we can transmit our message securely. But how secure is it? Well, there are only about 3 million possible mappings. And since we have no idea what the data may mean, we can never know if we have the right one. But this is the real world. So let's assume that we know what the numbers mean. Let's assume that they represent letters. There's an interesting thing about letters, though. They don't all come with the same frequency. In fact, some letters are far more likely than others for a specific language. So given enough encrypted number strings using the same mapping, we can analyze those numbers statistically and start making very educated guesses. From those guesses, we can then derive the mapping that we used as a key. And voila, we have broken the encryption. We can read any message sent using that mapping. So substituting numerals won't work. I know, let's create a fixed number key. And then we add that key to each one of the numbers of our plain text. We can simply share this number key with our friend and we can communicate securely. Or can we? As it turns out, this has the same problems as before. Given enough encrypted numbers, we can do the same analysis that we did before and determine the key statistically. Note that this is also known as a rotational cipher, or in other words, rote 13, or the Caesar cipher. So now what? Well, we can take the next natural step. Let's change the number that we add for each position. But now we have another problem. How do we communicate the series that we're adding to? Well, as it turns out, there are two types of solutions. We can pre-generate random pads to use and share these pre-generated pads with our friend. Then we use those pads to encrypt our numbers. <clears throat> Notice that there's no way to statistically attack this. Since the pad amount changes for each character, we've created perfect security. Well, under one condition. That we never reuse a random pad. If we don't ever reuse it, it's called a one-time pad and demonstrates perfect security. But it's not that useful because it requires a lot of these pads, one for every message. There must be another way. What if we had a function which generated these random pads for us? Then we can just share this key and we're all good. Well, not really. Since that's no different than using the naive function, the one advantage is that we can reuse the same function with different keys. But we can do better. Let's make that function take two arguments instead, a key and an input. Now we can use the same secret key to generate many different pads. The really cool part is that our security only depends upon the key being secret we can openly share the input. So now we have this function that takes a key and an input and produces a random looking output. Let's also build the opposite function, one that takes that output and produces the input. We can call this pair of functions a block cipher. It's important to note that the function will always produce an output of a fixed length. So if we want to encrypt, more than this length of data, we need to use these functions multiple times. The first thought would be to encrypt the data directly with the cipher. 
So we feed the block of data that we want to encrypt as the input and use the output as the ciphertext. The name for this is Electronic Codebook, or ECB. Note that the same input with the same key will always have the same output. That's not good. The problem is we can still do statistical analysis. We can still attack this mode pretty easily. Surely we can do better. Well, what if instead we used a random input? Since the key is secret, we can share this random input openly. Let's call this an initialization vector, or an IV for short. One way to use this would be to encrypt the IV directly using the output as a pad for our plain text. Let's call this output feedback. The interesting thing is we can use the output of one block as the input for the next. So we're effectively chaining each block together, feeding back the output of one block as the input to the next. Using this, we can securely encrypt data of an arbitrary size. To decrypt the data, we just perform the exact same operations, swapping the position of the ciphertext and the plaintext. Note that we only ever need the encrypt operation. We never need the inverse function decrypt. And we've arrived at our first secure cipher mode. As long as the key is secret and we don't reuse an initialization vector, this is secure. There are many other methods like this that differ in how blocks are chained and how um, the input vector is used, such as cipher feedback and cipher block chaining and counter mode, but we don't need to go into those now. Now, there's a whole lot more we could go into, but I think this is a good start. There's a lot to digest here, but one thing to keep in mind, the only 100% secure system is one that does not exist. All systems are subject to some kind of attack, even if it's a social engineering attack. If you really need to secure a system, above all, hire an expert.